like, like we talked about the federal election law because of our friends McCain and Feingold, it's very difficult to navigate those waters. So we have brought on Todd Singer, who as Mark mentioned is one of the best federal election law guys in the nation, in the entire Libertarian Party, I should say. Um, I don't want to discredit you, but you probably, you might be in the nation here. So anyways, here's Todd Singer to talk about federal election law. What I usually do, we start off with a, a training session uh, in general is, is, you guys have all heard the saying, you know, anything worth doing is worth doing well. Uh, I think that's a terrible saying. Uh, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly until you learn to do it well. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't start anything, right? Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can't do it right off the bat. Well, now I'm going to give you an exception to that rule. Federal Election Commission uh, reporting. You don't want to do it poorly because, as Mark alluded to, uh, there are heavy fines. The county and local races, it's usually not as big a deal as far as the scope, but the federal, the feds will, will uh, hit hard, and, and they don't even think that they're, you know, like Mark said, ten to $30,000, they just think that's a slap on the wrist. Right? Because, that, because the kind of money that they deal with um, is a lot larger than, than libertarian campaigns are used to raising. Um, in general, and when, of course, federal election, we're talking U.S. Congress, U.S. Senate. Um, if you guys are ever in a position to run for president or vice president, that would apply. But the trigger is $5,000. If you raise or spend more than that amount, you must file on a federal campaign. You must file with the FEC. Um, now, in reality, I'm not a lawyer, I, you know, I'm, I'm just an accountant, but it, the way that I read the law, even if you don't reach that threshold, the FEC can force you to produce the records that you would need to file anyway. So it's a good idea if, you, if you're going to run for that to just have the mindset, okay, I've, I've got to follow these rules, I have to keep a copy of all the checks, I can't take more than $50 in cash from any one person because that's, that's $50 is the maximum for a person. Anything more than that has to be a check, getting cash. Things like that, they're in the Canada Guide and I would uh, encourage you to, to get that on the fec.gov, the website, they've got the good Canada guys out there, spend some time with them. Um, you know, I'm a slow reader, but an hour or two can get you through the most important things. And. Did we mention to not coordinate state and federal campaigns? I'm not I, sure. I'm not sure if we mentioned that, but if, if you've got a federal candidate and, and you've got a state and local candidate, do, do not coordinate between the two because it's, uh, it's a jumble. It's, uh, it, it's, it's not going to be worth trying to figure out. Uh, anyone who contributes $200 or more has to be identified along with their address, their employer, and their occupation. And that's the county year, so they give you $100, they write you a $100 check in June. Then they write you another hundred dollar check in July. You didn't have to report it in June, but now you got to report it in July. You got to report the hundred dollars and the two hundred dollars here today. Um, the other tricky part of the law is what's referred to as federal election activity, and that can come into play with registration. Get out the vote efforts in particular will we'll, uh, qualify for federal election activity if it happens within a certain amount. It's usually sixty days, but it can be any time leading up to a federal. So, so if you do registration, like Mark said, you wanted to get some legal advice. And uh, with federal ele election activity, there isn't actually a threshold. If you do any federal ele election activity, even if you spend the $500, you've got to file with the FEC. We talked about the fines, that so they're heavy. Um, and then my general rule is to file paperwork on time. I know that sounds kind of silly, but like, like Mark said, they've got rules, and if you stay within the rules, uh, you've got a, you know, a good chance of being okay. If you go out of the rules, their mindset usually is that they have to enforce the, the rules as written. So if it's a couple minutes late, it doesn't matter. If it's a couple minutes late, or if it's a day late, uh, they will consider that a late filing, or it's called non filing in, in FEC parlance. So get, get your filings in on time with. with the federal, it's usually, usually at 11.59 p.m., that's usually the deadline. And um, if you file in paper, you actually can wait up until the day of and then do an overnight. As long as you overnight it on that day, 
uh, they're still still protected. They still consider that to be on time. I mentioned the good resources out at fec.gov, and I think I'm going to cut off at that point because I don't know how how many uh, federal campaigns we've, we've got. I know we've got one person at least. But does anybody have questions for Mark or for Todd? I have one for either of you. Could you guys uh, explain in-kind donations and how those sure. uh, need to be deal dealt with? In-kind donation is similar. Uh, it would be an example. A friend of yours pays for um, a conference room or, or a room at a restaurant. So they pay the restaurant $300 and then you have your campaign event on there. Even though you didn't collect the money, that's called an in-kind contribution. Somebody contributed to your campaign in kind of an indirect way. So what you do is you report the income and the expense. You report $300 of income and $300 of expense as in kind. And then you would get that person's name, address, employer, occupation, et cetera. In what instances do they come after the, uh, the candidate themselves as opposed to the treasurer or the manager? It's just that's how the law is written. And the treasurer is usually on the hook for the most likely, at least at least from the federal level. Um, Same for the state. It's the treasurer is the one who everything's pointed at the treasurer. The thought process I think behind that is, like Sam mentioned, candidate's supposed to be talking to voters and, and asking for money. So it's expected that the treasurer is the one that's going to navigate the campaign finance laws. It's also financial checks and balance. And we'll see. I think we have Ron. Yeah, I know it's kind of a ridiculous question, but we're talking about dealing with the government. So what if someone doesn't have an occupation, retired, housewife? Are those acceptable things yes. to put in that yes. spot? Yeah. So um, you, you need to put something down. And it has to be Whatever. Change change change. <laughs> so just, yeah. they have to have More something in the spot. Something. Yeah, so you nothing is not, is not acceptable. Nothing's not That's correct. OK. Mm -hmm. Shall <coughs> No foreign nationals. So I like it. It. Now, I know you guys didn't say it, but I, I got the impression that you can't have federal and, and state races coordinate. Yes. Um, the, what about, uh, as far as county parties, I know in the past we've put out like a list of all our candidates in a given year. Do we need to be careful about listing all, all the candidates together in one sheet? Well, you always have to be careful. But no, if it's a, if just a county race or just a local race, you're not going to usually run into anything. However, it's always good to keep in mind that, like, for 2010, that is a federal election. Because, because we did that last year. We listed Bob Barr and, and Wayne Amarud. Uh, and, and, right. If you mention a federal candidate, all bets are off. Now, now you yeah, entered into the... Okay, just hand it down to, to pass it around. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about a candidate doing that. I'm not wondering about the, the county, the county party. Because how many of us are involved with the county party here? I mean... Yeah, Slate... I'll have to get to the, there is, I think there actually is a specific yeah. issue with Slate. Yeah. Uh, One of the things I noticed last year was that our <coughs> friends and Democrats here in Marion County had put out something like that with the Slate, uh, slate all the county, all the people in the county that were running, which included the state reps and state uh, senators. Did it include the federal candidates? That yes. Was the question. It, did. it did. Andre was on there. Yes, oftentimes, though, you'll look at that, you'll see that it was issued by the uh, Republican State Party or the Marion County Party that has an FEC arm of the Republican Party. You can, um, I know this is being videotaped, um, it, so from the standpoint of, is there some issues on can you just put a little bit in there? I haven't seen that, I haven't seen that prosecuted. I have seen it argued that it's okay, it's very minor. I've also seen other people in election law blogs argue that it doesn't matter. Okay. So is there some gray in there? Yes. Okay. I'd be glad to talk to you more later about this in the In general, I would not mention federal candidates. Also, one other thing I want to mention, these blue cards that were passed out, if you see it's the second line, contributions are subject to the limits and prohibitions of the Federal Election Campaign Act. Anything in the federal candidate that you send out asking for money has got to have that on it. There's also some other wording that you could do alternatively, but that's the one that I chose. So take, you can take the blue, another good reason to take these blue cards with you.